Particle physics is the development of nuclear physics. We're actually now able, through technology and the advances in science and detection systems and so on, to actually now probe down to the very tiniest fundamental building blocks of matter. We can now see down to distances of a million, million, millions of a meter. And once we do that, we can actually understand the nature of matter and the forces between them to a level that actually now allows us to understand the evolution from the Big Bang of the universe. In other words, the very tiniest scale that we can study in physics gives us the clue to the size of the universe today and the way that the universe is made up. The LHC is the culmination of uh, technology building larger and larger accelerators. We previously had a large electron-positron collider, and now what we're building in the same tunnel, which is 27 kilometers round and 150 meters underground, this is the largest machine in the world. It will actually also be looking for the very smallest substructure of matter, particle bit of eluded as in the past. In particular, one particle that's going to be uh, looked for is the Higgs boson. Our understanding of nature at the moment is that we have a standard model of particles and interactions. And the ability to actually put that together, the synthesis of the electromagnetic forces that actually were synthesized together by James Clark Maxwell, that process of synthesized electromagnetic forces with the weak interaction, the so-called electroweak interaction, that was only possible because Professor Emeritus Peter Higgs did some work in 1964 which showed how that could be done. Having shown how it could be done and the precision measurements were taken at length, there is one missing elusive ingredient left over in that theory, which is the so-called Higgs boson. The Large Hadron Collider is almost certain to find that Higgs boson if it exists. And this would be a completion of the standard model because it actually allows us to understand why these fundamental building blocks of matter have the masses they have because they interact through this. But the Higgs boson is the missing final ingredient in that particular puzzle. I'm standing in front of the blackboard which has on it the equations written by Peter Higgs, which were contained in the paper he wrote in 1964, the famous Higgs boson. Since that time, we've been looking for the Higgs boson. And now we're reaching the stage where LHC will be on and looking and the search will be in real earnest. So that's one of the primary goals of LHC, but there are other things that are beyond what we would call the standard model. Higgs would complete that, but there are other things that are actually will be looked for. There are searches for so-called dark matter candidates. If we look out into the universe, we can actually see evidence that amongst the galaxies that we can actually see, where we see suns and stars and all of that material, shining, visible material, there has to be dark matter. In fact, dark matter dominates. 99.9% .9 of the matter is dark matter and we don't see it. And at the present time, we have no idea what that is. In addition, the universe appears to be accelerating. This is not expected. Deep space searchers looking for galaxies and supernovas show us that the universe is accelerating away, as though there's some pressure inside. And that pressure may come from something called dark energy. And again, we have no real idea of what that is. So although the standard model is a superb example of experiments showing how the theories can be put together, Observations show us that we are on the start of that journey. There are many unanswered questions that young minds such as yours can come along and answer in the future. Professor Hicks, how do you feel watching your work take shape in the form of the NHC? Well, it's, a, it's been a long wait for me because my work was in uh, uh, the 60s it's, and it's now um, let me think, 44 years since I wrote the first papers. So it's been a very long wait for 
you know, a succession of, of machines to be built at higher and higher energies. Uh, and now it, it seems as if they have enough energy actually to find something. So I'm looking forward to the, the start-up. Okay, so how do you feel Edinburgh has played a part in your work? Well, in, uh, Edinburgh's play, played a, a, a very important part in my work. Um, I first came to Edinburgh hitchhiking as a student in 1949 during the third Edinburgh Festival and decided Edinburgh was a place I would like to live. And um, it wasn't until 1953 that Edinburgh did the right thing in terms of my career, which was to, to appoint the person that I wanted to come and work with as the Tate Professor. That's the, not, not Richard Kenway's predecessor, but the one before that. And that was when I first came to Edinburgh shortly afterwards, 1954. So uh, Edinburgh has been very much the setting for all the work which I've done in, in particle physics since then. Thank you. And what would you say to a student coming to university to study physics? Well, I, I'd, I'd say it's a, it's a splen splendid choice. It's, very, it's a very interesting subject with all sorts of possibilities for a career afterwards. Not, I mean, not just staying in research, but, you know, other things in the wild, wide world. And you get to know quite a lot about how the world works as a result. Thank you.